What's up guys, it's your boy A-Dog and P-Dog coming at you live from Plano, Texas. Um, so we're going to give you the lowdown on all the spots here to fish. Um, Patrick will start you off with a community sized lake. Our first lake is at a park in Winding Hollow. It's a community lake and it is very big. Uh, now, although the uh, area is large, the actual depth of the lake is not too deep. So uh, you're going to be fishing for a uh, bass and uh, maybe bluegill. Uh, the waters there are very weedy, and uh, so you want to be using a uh, weedless or shallow diving crankbait. Uh, those will help you not get your uh, bait lost or stuck. Um, now, when you move to the uh, south side of the lake, uh, away from the dam, uh, that's where you uh, want to use worms for fishing, and uh, those worms will give you an opportunity to get uh, different types of fish fish that you couldn't get on the uh, north side. Um, the only bad thing about the lake is that there's a security officer that uh, he'll tell you to go away and to leave because it's a private lake, but it's fine. Uh, yeah, so another one of our lakes um, is off of Midway and Communications. So you can just, you can park anywhere uh, inside this neighborhood because it's, I mean, it's a tiny neighborhood, so you can walk straight to the ponds. Um, so yeah, there's, it. It's a series of uh, ponds, probably each about like a quarter of an acre, and they all feed into each other. Um, and so the max depth is probably six feet. So you're not going to want to be fishing any crankbaits, maybe a spinner if you want to, you know, get some vibrations uh, in the water. Um, but yeah, so what you want to do is you want to fish, you know, either like uh, a creature bait, such as like a brush hog or um, something of that nature, and you want to fish the points and um, where these lakes feed into each other, there's fast flowing water. And that's where all the bait fish are going to get put, uh, pushed in. So that's where the big bass are going to be sitting. So you're going to want to target those spots. Um, the very bottom lake that, bo that uh, borders Midway, that's going to be your deepest lake with a fountain. Um, that's the lake you really want to hit and the lake uh, right above it. Um, and our last fishing spot is uh, Arbor Hills, which people, you know, are genuinely like, oh, no, that's just like where you can catch like little dinky fish. But um, I've actually found that there's some pretty good sized fish like uh, I there's like a four and a half or five pounder that's just sitting under this log that I, I've seen him swimming around. Uh, I've caught, you know, a two pounder and a three pounder out of there. Um, so, I mean, they're pretty good sized fish for, for being a creek that's only like four or five feet deep. Um, so what you want to do is you want to come down Parker and you want to park right off of uh, Rambit Drive. And um, so the bass are in this creek only on this section of the river because it's where it's the overflow of the Prestonwood Hills. Um, pond and so that's where you want to go in here. Um, you want to bring like you know a little swim bait, uh, stick it on a jig head. Uh, it's probably only two inches if you want to catch your brim because I mean they're not very big fish. I mean I'm talking maybe maybe six inches long. Um, but if you want to catch the bass, throw a creature bait. It's all gonna be sight fishing, so make sure you stand back and make sure you just aim for the holes of the uh, so like you know the deep holes, the deep sections where it's you know four or five feet deep. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a good little way you can spend your Saturday. Go you know spend two or three hours out there. Go hike. It means like a go wade through the water for two or three miles. Um, so yeah, that's the overview of our uh, ponds that we have here in Plano, the, the, my favorite spots and Patrick's favorite spots. Um, so yeah, now we'll get on to our baits. Welcome to P and A Dog's bait assessment. Now what we got here is a swim bait. Now. The swim bait, um, it's made of plastic. It's not an actual fish. It may look like it, but it's not. It's to confuse all the other fish. So, um, the main idea here is that a fish will bite onto it, confusing it as a uh, natural uh, prey. Um, now, what you want here for uh, this type of bait is half an ounce. Uh, that size is good for a uh, fish you want to catch, and then. Uh, it can't be any more than four inches. If it's more than four inches, but fish won't be able to get it, it'll be too big. Uh, you don't want to throw it into any weeds, because if you do, it'll get tangled and you'll have to lose the bait. You don't want to do that. Uh, you want to, when you, once you cast it out, you want to, you know, reel it in slowly, uh, imitate an actual fish, uh, you know, this is a uh, great piece of bait. I use it all the time. 
Uh, it's one of my favorites. My father passed it down to me. It's just great. Can, re <laughs> can uh, recommend it more. All right. Next off, we have a hollow uh, frog. Now, this is a, a very special <laughs> bait piece. Um, the thing about it is, is uh, it's it's good for casting into uh, weeds. See, the weeds aren't able to uh, hook onto the bait, uh, so you'll be able to get the fish that are hiding in there. Uh, this is best used during the uh, when the sun isn't out. You know, during the morning hours or during the uh, during the night. Great times. Uh, overall, it's it's just amazing. Uh, I caught a, a fish back in the day. It was about 12 pounds. Uh, you know, it's my first one. Just using this piece alone. Yeah. What's up guys, this is Adog's version of recommended baits to use. Um, first off, we have a soft plastic crawdad um, with a 5 watt wide gap hook. Uh, I would recommend using this um, in either the lakes, but uh, specifically probably the um, creek. Uh, because of its presentation, you don't really need a, uh, you don't need a weight. Um, but I would recommend uh, throwing this in the creek, um, especially in the, you know, the deeper channels where you see some of the bass. Um, on the on the same lines, I would also throw maybe a um, uh, baby brush hog on a uh, four aught straight shank hook. Um, you could also throw you know like a maybe a ringtail worm or a um, uh, or a cinco, and you, you want to use like a bullet weight, uh, probably a quarter of an ounce because you don't want anything too heavy. Um, and staying a little more weedless because of all the stuff there, you want you might want to throw a, a spinner bait. These are will uh, no sorry these are oak leaf blades that give off more vibrations. Um, you can use willow leaf, it really doesn't matter. But um, I wouldn't go much bigger than this. Um, you can also throw on a trailer hook if necessary if you're losing a lot of fish. Um, and for the top water, I would throw a buzz bait. Um, this is what I would really use because it uh, really attracts the fish because it's so loud on top of the water. Um, this one has three blades, but you can throw, you know, maybe a two blade. Um, I just also use a very uh, large buzz bait because it attracts the fish. And all the fish are hungry, especially here in these uh, little community ponds. So this is probably going to be your go-to bait.